So hello, it's uh, good to have uh, Gary White with us today, uh, the CEO and co-founder of Water.org, an observer, an innovator, and a problem solver who helped create solutions that has empowered millions of people in need with access to safe and to safe water and sanitation. So uh, welcome on board, uh, Gary. It's good to have you today. Great, thanks for uh, letting me be here. Looking forward to the to the talk. Great. So, Gary, now Water.org is based on the principle of market-driven financial solutions uh, to the global water crisis. Can you tell us a bit more about what that means in terms of how this impacts humanity and what is the model of partnering that you embark on uh, moving forward? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Uh, it, it is uh, still an intractable problem that we're trying to solve with getting everyone in the world access to water and sanitation, uh, but it is solvable. And I have a lot of confidence that we will get even more kind of uh, investment and, and energy behind SDG number six, which is water and sanitation for all. And I think, you know, yes, you, you really hit the nail on the head right off the, the, the bat with uh, the, the concept of access to finance and, and market driven solutions. And I think, you know, one of the ways to illustrate that is to, to imagine like, uh, you know, today, everyone in the world, when they woke up, got their water somewhere. Right. The question is, where did they get that? How much did they have to spend in terms of time to walk to collect it? How much did they have to spend to, to purchase the water? Uh, you know, people living in, in urban slums around the world often pay huge amounts of, of money for their water, sometimes 25 percent of their income. Or how much did they pay in terms of their health? And all of these are really financial monetary uh, hits that, that families take, either foregone you know, wages because they're walking to collect water or because of the direct cost. So what we see as a fundamental challenge with this sector is that there's never gonna be enough charity in the world to get everybody access to water. So we have to look, how do we leverage that philanthropy and that charity? And that's what we do with our water credit program, recognizing that people can actually avail themselves of small loans working through our microfinance partner network so that they can get the water or sanitation solution that's best for them and then they can buy back their time that they would spend walking to collect water and can now work at a paying job or they might no longer be paying that water vendor you know 10 times or 15 times what it costs to to get the public tap water at their home so they use these loans to be able to get a public tap to pay those connection fees or to uh, you know secure a rainwater harvesting system in rural areas and then they're able to capture those those economic benefits and repay the loans and allow us to to reach more people with the philanthropic capital that we raise and if you fast forward we've been doing this for more than a decade uh, with water credit now we've reached over 40 million people through our partner network and we've been able to catalyze about 3.3 billion dollars in these loans to help people get access and those loans repaid about 99 percent hmm, that's very interesting I'm, I'm very much intrigued uh, with with all these achievements 40.2 million people 3.3 billion dollars wow that this is really amazing and uh, in order to continue the scaling efforts of your work what are the main barriers that you are trying to remove to work around in terms of access to affordable capital and in terms of, for example, aging and under-resourced infra infrastructure? Yeah, so what, what we've seen is demand for these, these household level loans has taken off. There's often a bottleneck in terms of the capital from the top down. So being able to help these financial institutions and increasingly we're looking towards, you know, infrastructure and helping uh, utilities and service providers particularly like in secondary cities where they're starved for capital to expand the infrastructure. So we're looking at helping them get access to, to financing as well. So the real bottleneck, uh, there's really two for us. One is, you know, we, 
do work as as an NGO to be able to correct these market failures and to work to to de-risk some of this lending. So we're always in need of more philanthropic capital to help us to continue to expand this work to new regions. But then we also need more investment capital. And with that top-down type of financing that's needed to replace some of this aging infrastructure, uh, we also have water equity, which is an asset manager that that water.org incubated and then spun off as a, as a separate legal entity. Now, Water Equity has, has raised more than $200 million in capital to invest uh, in this type of infrastructure as well as financial institutions. And, you know, that that shows that, that those funds that we've raised uh, through Water Equity, again, which is an asset manager, those provide an attractive or a financial return to investors as well as delivering huge social impact. So we see the need to bring more capital in to not displace government capital uh, or some of the multilateral capital, but to be a complement to that. And as we bring our capital, what we can do is bring our knowledge of how do you work with some of the poorest segments of the population to ensure the capital that is invested reaches down that economic pyramid and helps some of the most disenfranchised get access to what is critical critical to, to life, and that is access to water and proper sanitation. Wow, this is quite an, an impressive and very effective model that you're 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 deploying now. Um, as 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 I as I said, you know, with 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 your model that you're implementing, financing is is a major part of Water.org's work. But there is also the te- the, the technology leverage side to your work. Mm-hmm. I know with your global reach, you could procure technical solutions and implementation at scale, and thereby reduce the cost. However, Mm -hmm. I understand that you favor a different model where the tech solutions are localized. They are local. Why is that you prefer? Why why is that this is your preferred solution? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, it's interesting. I I have like three engineering degrees, so I I love technology, but I also recognize the limitations of technology and how, you know, historically, a lot of technology that has been imported to some of the kind of low income countries has been, you know, technology that isn't necessarily always appropriate uh, in those situations. So there is kind of a track record of, you know, uh, infrastructure that falls into disuse or disrepair. But that that it, it's not either or. I do think, you know, the the technology is important, but it's also important to recognize that you know, for people, uh, you know, living in poverty, the simple solution can often be the best, whether that is just getting a connection to the utility or a simple uh, well with a hand pump as opposed to to something more, more exotic. But we recognize that, you know, also that we do need to bring more capital into that top-down infrastructure and to be able to, uh, to help utilities implement the right technology for them, for their local environment, for their conditions. And that that is what's key to it. It's, it's, it's not about you know, accepting technology or, or, or rejecting it. It's about understanding the best technology fit for, for the local situation. Perfect. Now, my last question is that young people are often credited with keener interest in social impact and therefore hopeful that as a younger investor cohorts grow up and become more uh, affluent, much more capital will be will be will move into impact investment. Yeah, we we are already seeing that, and the, the fact that you know you can undertake social impact investing and still you know reap. Uh, you know, market returns on your investment while having social impact. And so certainly the, this intergenerational transfer of wealth that's in the, you know, the tens of trillions of dollars that's happening, uh, a lot of people who are, you know, on the receiving end of that wealth are much more attuned to impact investing. And we have been able to connect with some of them to bring them into the, the water equity funds as well as the philanthropic capital that's needed to kind of set this whole kind of social enterprise in motion. And that's where the two organizations of water.org and water equity really come together 
as water.org correcting market failures and helping build investment pipeline, and then water equity raising that capital from the global capital markets, providing financial returns, and then huge social impact. So we see this as kind of a seed that can hopefully be you know, grown and nurtured so that capital markets beyond what we're just doing will respond to this urgent need uh, of water and sanitation for SDG number six. Perfect. It, it has been a great pleasure having you with us today, Gary, and looking forward to have you in person in Abu Dhabi and ADSW and IWS. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Mohammed.